Yo, 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 what's up, everyone? This is Vicente. And this is Izzy. And welcome back to the Ivy Podcast. And ladies and gentlemen, today is the day that we finally cover the Jurassic Park franchise. Now, even if you're not a big fan of this particular franchise in general, you cannot admit that this franchise has caused a lot of positives in cinema history. And it's the reason why a lot of movies are made today. Oh, yeah. This is one of the most memorable franchises and one i will never forget yeah like it you get you have countless video games countless shows countless movies just everything shirts merchandise like you you have to know what jurassic park is just it's it's basic it's humans on an island getting chased by dinosaurs nothing simpler than that we have we get some of the most memorable quotes an entire franchise we get funny memes out of this most particularly the jeff goldblum shirtless meme <laughs> I love it. And Izzy, you want to add on anything for this franchise about what it means to you? The franchise has been one that I grew up with and is actually one of my mom's favorites. So I grew up watching this franchise. Yeah. As a kid, me and my little brother, RJ, we freaking love, we, we <laughs> loved all of them. And I don't know if he still likes them. It is probably whatever to him, but I, I'll always hold this franchise dear to my heart. You know, I even love the Jurassic World movies, despite me having some problems with that particular trilogy but we'll get more into it and like i said iconic franchise and i'm going to compare it to star wars so how the original trilogy of star wars was for people back then this is what jurassic park is for me it's such a big impact on my childhood that i'm always gonna love it and i'm gonna show me and izzy future kids about it and I don't know what I'm just I'm speech I'm speechless. Yeah. This franchise was actually one that we bonded over when we first started talking and it brought back a lot of memories for both of us when we st are starting the series. Oh yeah. <laughs> but just to get this out of the way, I love the first Jurassic Park film, but in the franchise, it is my second favorite. Now, I can tell people are going to be like, "Wait, what? That's blasphemy. Oh, that's stupid." <laughs> There is a movie I like a little bit better, which I will explain later on in this in this Jurassic Park review franchise. But this is how it's going to go down. We're going to cover all six movies, and at the end of all six the six movie franchise episodes, we're going to do an official franchise ranking. And I'm looking forward to that, Izzy. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to add on for this series? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to going diving into all the movies again because I don't think we've watched all of them in a long time. Yeah, it's been it's been a cool while. And recently, I've kind of looked looked read a little bit of the first book, and the fr I love the first book, but we'll get more into that later. Izzy hasn't read any of them, but I know she plans on to in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But yeah, iconic franchise, love it. And before anyone asks, how is this a horror movie? It, it, it's horror. It's not straight horror. It's horror adjacent. But we will dive into about why people think it's horror and about why I think it's horror. Yeah. Um, especially when you get to the book and everything. <laughs> yeah, but for now, we'll get into the book a little bit later. But for now, we we looked up some Jurassic Park, fa Jurassic Park facts about the movies, behind the scenes, a little film breakdown. And some I knew, some Izzy had to look up, and there's one in particular that surprised the hell out of me, but we'll get into it. <laughs> so for our first one, Steven Spielberg was working on ER, and then he found out about Jurassic Park. But ER was a book written by Michael Creighton, and Michael Creighton said that if someone's going to make a movie about Jurassic Park, he wants a good film director, and he wants a good amount of salary for the film rights, and honestly... That man was that man made the right call. He mm -hmm. rich as hell. And as soon as Steven Spielberg heard about Michael Creighton wanting to make a movie out of this book, oh yeah, he was like, No, I have to make this. Yep. Um and from there the franchise just launched and I think it's really cool how the two worked together for a really long time on this project. Yeah, they were they were pretty close. I even think that Michael Creighton got to help with some of the screenplay. Mm -hmm. I believe I'm not entirely sure. I think there is even a rumor that he did provide a screenplay, but it was a little bit too gory and R-rated. And, you know, dinosaurs are going to sell the kids, so you need a piece of them. Yeah. And so, yeah, I love hearing about it. And it's cool to know that Spielberg wanted to do I mean, this is the man that made Jaws and E.T. Iconic franchises. Iconic, especially Jaws. So 
if anyone was going to do Jurassic Park right, especially the first film, it had to be Spielberg. Yeah. And some of the other um, uh, screenwriters that were up for the vote for the book was actually really interesting. Yeah. Like, <laughs> instead of Universal, at one point, it was Warner Brothers and yeah. 20th Century Fox. And I, I can't, I, I honestly can't see it just because Universal has a good track record with monster fe- mm-hmm. uh, monster flicks like the creature from the black lagoon werewolf man dracula the invisible man and most certainly jaws and so it- it's nice to know that universal took care of this property very well agreed all right and for our second fact in the movie they kind of deal with a tropical storm but in reality they actually did have a hurricane on set and that um uh, the guy who plays john hammond richard a ton, bro. I probably mispronounced the hell out of that. He slept through the entire event. But this hurricane did provide a lot of difficulties on set. Mm-hmm. Because I know Ray, the character of Ray Arnold, who's played by the amazing Samuel L. Jackson, actually was going to film a death scene for his character. But, you know, hurricane, tropical storm kind of messed up the set a little bit. Oh, that's actually a really cool fact. And also, with the storm, too, it did damage some of the animatronics, so that did provide more difficulty. Yeah, and, like, you had, like, there were some scenes where, like, the animatronics went crazy. Mm-hmm. Some they kept in. We're not going to say which ones they kept in, but you can tell. But first, you didn't know that, Izzy? No. About the, ra- the Samuel L. Jackson not death the scene? Samuel L. Jackson jo- not the Samuel L. Jackson death. Yeah, I, I don't know if I could have watched that. Just I like Samuel L. Jackson. Me, too. And it-, it sucks he died. In the movie, in the book, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. And for the third fact, Steven Spielberg actually did hire some paleontologists so he can get some advice and uh, consultants for the movie. And you can make an argument about whether he was right or right or wrong, because I hear arguments saying dinosaurs have feathers. Oh, dinosaurs are actually birds instead of lizards. And so, you know, I'm not we're not here to discuss that. Now, Izzy, do you want to say what they resemble, what type of species? Because I still can't pronounce it. Um, so actually, they were the Velociraptors that we see in the movie are actually more of the Dean Anxious species. Um, but in reality, the vo- lo- reality Velociraptors are really only like fifty feet tall, and so they weren't they weren't accurate. But for the time being. The information the movie movies were going off of was accurate for the time. Yeah, and you know, like I think of Velociraptor, like in reality, was barely like three feet tall. Yeah. So they took a lot of inspiration from Uda Raptors and the Dinica species, but you know, it's still nice that Spielberg wanted to make somewhat of accuracy. Whether he was right or wrong, that's not up up for us to discuss. We're just providing fun facts about the movie. Yeah. And now here comes some of the cool. The last cool fact. Some of the casting could have been different for this movie. And instead instead of Sam Neill as the amazing Alan Grant, we almost got Harrison Ford, most known as Han Solo and Indiana Jones. But mm-hmm. I, I can't see that. As much as I love Harrison Ford, I know he's not really like a big franchise person unless he's the main star. And yeah, Alan Grant's the main star. But later on in this series, Alan Grant kind of gets pushed back in this series. Yeah. I think it would have been weird having Harrison Ford as Alan Grant. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I really can't see it. I mean, I think it just would have been Indiana Jones on an island with dinosaurs. Yeah. Now, an- another cool casting fact was Christina Ritchie, the original uh, Wednesday Adam, Or is it Wednesday Adams? Yeah. Yeah, Wednesday Adams. She was going to play the role as Lex. And... I can kind of see it. Could you? I can kind of see it, but at the same time, I don't know if I could see um, Lex with black hair. (laughs) Yeah, I think I just would have seen Wednesday on a island with dinosaurs. Now, the last cool casting fact. This this is the one I just found out from Izzy. Instead of Jeff Goldblum playing Ian Malcolm, at one point, Jim Carrey was almost Ian Malcolm. Now, I love me Jim Carrey. (laughs) <laughs> but I love Jeff Goldblum more. But I just can't see Jim Carrey doing the role of Ian Malcolm. Maybe the first movie, but definitely not The Lost World. Yeah, I think if he ended up taking the role, it would have been way too gimmicky for what we wanted. Yeah, and like I don't think 
I if Jim Carrey ended up being Ian Malcolm, I don't think Ian Malcolm would have ended up as my favorite character. No. You know, Jeff Goldblum makes the character of Ian a little bit special, which I will talk about more when we cover the Lost World movie mm-hmm. and the book. But those are some cool behind the scene facts of Jurassic Park. There's probably some that we missed, but we chose ones that we thought were really cool and that we really had no idea about. Yeah. Now, we're going to get into the book versus the movie. <laughs> now, I know the Jurassic Park movies are family movies. Kids are watching them. You're ha- it's action, adventure, thriller. But believe me when I say the first Jurassic Park book and the sequel, The Lost World, they are gory and violent as fuck. Like, it is straight up horror. It focuses on the animal brutality, the killings, most notably in the first book, you know, since we're not talking about The Lost World just yet. In the first book, Henry Wu, one of the cool, one, one of the lead scientists at Jurassic Park, he dies. In the movie, he lives, but in the book, this man gets eviscerated from a velociraptor and his guts spill all over the place and the ra- and the herd of raptors just start eating at his intestines and it goes into detail and it's so disgusting. It's nasty. And then the character of Dennis or um yeah, Dennis, Dennis Nedry. Mm-hmm. In the movie, yes, his death is, is disturbing, but in the book, it doesn't stop there. He, yes, he goes blind because of the poison from the Dilophosaurus. But he can't see. And then all of a sudden, he feels something slash out his stomach. And his he feels his intestines spill out. And in the movie, the Dilophosaurus is pretty small. In the book, that Dilophosaurus is fully grown. It is nine feet tall. Oh. And it picks up Dennis Nedry by the head and starts crushing at his skull. And in the book, it says that he feels his brain starting to scramble. And that in his last moments, he just prays that his death comes soon. <laughs> Izzy, your eyes kind of got big right there. <laughs> it just sounds nasty and gross just thinking about it. <laughs> and there were many ver- versions of the script for this movie. I think there was one in particular that was rated R. But R-rated dinosaur movies aren't going to sell a lot of tickets, especially back then for kids. Yeah. You know, dinosaurs plus kids equals a lot of money. Pretty much. And now... We're going to get into how some of the characters were a little bit different from the book and the movie. I think the only one that was really, really similar was the character of Robert Muldoon, who we'll talk about later in this episode. I liked him. We wanted to choose characters that we loved from this franchise. Now, Mm -hmm. fair warning, it's been a while since I've actually really read the book. I want to say maybe it's been four years since I've read it. I want to read them again just so in case there's anything I missed or if me and Izzy want to do a future podcast episode about every detail in the book for Jurassic Park and the Lost World. We'll see what's up. Yeah. Now, one of the big differences for book versus movie when it comes to his character, the character of Ian Malcolm in the movie and in the book, yes, he's charismatic and he's a chaotician and a mathematician. And he knows that Jurassic Park is going to fail. He just knows it because he tells him that life finds a way. It's evolution. You cannot contain life. But Hammond doesn't want to listen, neither do the scientists. But what separates the movie and book counterpart is that in the movie, Anna Malcolm is kind of a hero. I mean, for God's sakes, he's the main protagonist in The Lost World. Mm-hmm. And in the book, too. But we'll talk about it in, just in a little bit. But in the book, he's kind of a coward. Yeah. Like... He, he's a coward. He's kind of like the law, uh, the character of Donald Gerano, the lawyer dude, in the first movie. Like, um, he gets attacked by the T Rex. He runs out of fear when the T Rex finally breaks out of his paddock, and he runs. And the T Rex picks him up by his leg, and it messes him up. Mm-hmm. He's bleeding out. They're losing medical supplies. He cannot walk. He's walking with a limb, and he has to be helped. And in the first book, he actually dies. Like, he dies. They say, in, in the end, I think Alan asks Robert Muldoon, hey, where's Ian? And Robert Muldoon just shakes his head. But, you know, a sequel wasn't planned, so that would have been the end of Ian Malcolm. And it's so surprising to me to know that 
the the character of Ian Malcolm was kind of a coward in the book mm-hmm. when you watch it compared to the movie. Yeah, and it's really hard to think about the character Ian Malcolm being a coward. That was the one thing that surprised me when going over the facts. <laughs> yeah, and now another big ass difference between the characters: the character of Alan Grant in the movie. This man just hates kids. He talks about it. He even scares a kid about him, about the kid getting gutted by a velociraptor. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't want to do anything with Lex and him. Nothing at all. But in the book, he's an older man and he loves kids. He's he's a family guy, you know, and he protects Lex and Tim like, not, like they're his own kids. I mean, yeah, Alan grows to love kids in the movie, but in the book, he already loves kids and he already has that relationship with little ones. Mm-hmm. He and it's it's weird it's weird to think that he would like kids, but at the same time I like the idea of him liking kids in the book. <laughs> yeah, and his girlfriend in the movie, Ellie Sadler, isn't his girlfriend in the book. In the book, she's just a graduate st- graduate student, and you know, she's just a co-worker of Alan Grant. I think she's a little bit younger. I could be wrong, but in the movie they're pretty much the same age. So it's interesting. It's an interesting choice that they made them a couple in the movie when in the book they were just co-workers at best. Yeah, Dr. Doctor Grant was more of a mentor towards um, Ellie rather than a co-worker. Yeah, and so I always thought that was cool. And now this is when it kind of breaks my heart. <laughs> the character of John Hammond in The Lost World and in the first Jurassic Park movie, John Hammond is such a sweetheart. He makes Jurassic Park because he wants everyone in the world to see these animals. And even the lawyer dude, uh, Donald, uh, Donald, tells him, we can charge up the ASS for these tickets and people will pay to see them. And John says, no, I don't want to. The point is, is for everyone to see these animals. He loves everyone. He wants everyone to get a fair chance. But in the book, this man's a douchebag. Like, he doesn't give a crap about his workers. He doesn't give a crap about anyone. Like, even when people are dying in the book, all he cares about is still trying to make a profit about how he can save his own ass, about how he could escape the island with some of the uh, research. And it sucks to see him be like that. Like, he's just selfish, ambitious, is everything. But in the book, he dies. He dies by compies. He falls over a fence because he gets startled by a noise, which he thinks is a T-Rex roar, and he breaks his leg, and Sweet Karma comes and gets him, and he's killed by compies. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to think, because he's one of my favorite characters from the movie, too. <laughs> he's such a sweet old man. Yeah, and, and it's so... and Honestly, I'm kind of glad he changed it, because the actor himself rest in peace is a sweetheart in real life too i mean yeah in the movie you kind of see him like you kind of see a little bit of a corporate side to him like how he still wants jurassic park to run and even when the the dinosaurs escape he's still talking about how they can redo it Mm -hmm. but it's not to the point to where he's willing to get people killed just so he can save his own ass and still make money off of it yeah and so i will say for the movie a movie's sake, it was the right call. Yeah, I agree. And now, the character of Henry Wu. In the movie, he's just kind of like the side character. I mean, and eventually his character does become very important in the Jurassic World trilogy. But it's kind of a negative for me. But, like, I'll co- I'll cover that. We'll cover it when we get to the Jurassic World trilogy. But in the book, he plays a big part. And he's kind of, I would say, in the neutral side. Like, he wants to escape and help others. Like, there's a scene in the book where he rescues Robert Muldoon, who just got injured from a raptor attack, and brings him back to safety and looks at him, gives him medical attention. But in the movie, he's just kind of there to explain how they made the dinosaurs, that they use amphibian DNA to complete the code with all the dinosaur DNA that they found the uh, mosquito amber. Yeah. And with Dr. Wu's characters, I've always been kind of so-so, but it'd be interesting to see how important his character is in the book. Yeah. And like I said, he gets messed up in the book. It <laughs> sucks. I remember reading as a kid. I think when I read that part as a kid, 
I had to I had to stop reading for like a cool week. I got scared. The fact that these cute these dinosaurs are like brutalizing people, and believe me when I say the books are straight up horror. Mm -hmm. Like there's if they were to make Jurassic Park like how they are in the book, there's no way kids could see this movie. They would be scared. It really dwells into the psychology of everything with the animal violence and about how us as human are just greedy. Yeah. And Henry Wu kind of Henry the character of Henry Wu kind of goes over that gray moral area about how he wants to perfect the dinosaurs, but at the same time he could kind of see that shit's going sideways and he doesn't want to mess that up. But you know, the character of John Hammond in the book tells him, do it or you're fired in a way. Yeah. And now for our last character, the lawyer Donald Gennaro. And in the book. He is such a badass. Mm -hmm. He's what Ian was in Jurassic Park. In the movie, of course. Like, there's a scene where he's fighting off, not physically fighting off two, not physically fighting off two raptors, but he's trying to outsmart them. I think he ends up, he kicks one of them, but this man's a badass. Like, he's going out there to save his life, to save the, the sacrificing his life to save the kids. I mean, he doesn't die. He ends up living in the end. But a little fun fact, and I think Jeff Goldblum said this in an interview. On the way to Hawaii, to where they were shooting the movie at on an island, the actor who plays Donald Gerano went up to Jeff Goldblum and said, hey, you know your character dies in the movie, right? And that I'm a hero. And he was kind of teasing Jeff Goldblum about it. And man, <laughs> did sweet karma play into that factor. Mm -hmm. Especially with both of them just basically kind of switching personalities from the book. <laughs> yeah, and he even switches personalities with uh, John Hammond. Mm -hmm. So how nice Donald Gerano is in the book, how caring he is, that's how John Hammond is. And in the movie, how he, how the lawyer is in this movie is how John Hammond was in the book. Mm -hmm. So in the movie, Donald only cares about profits. That's all he sees. That's all he cares about. While John cares about people wanting to see the attraction. And so it's a very interesting yin, yin and yang situation. Yeah, the Lord just got the bad draw of the cards. <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be it for our book versus movie when it comes to that topic. I don't want to spoil too much of it. Just I recommend reading the book or listening to an audiobook. I'm pretty sure they have free versions on Spotify and YouTube. I could be wrong. Yep. If you've seen any audiobooks lately izzy yeah def and also check out your library and use the libby app it helps a ton izzy no one uses libraries no more well i use libraries izzy curl up <laughs> and now of course with our film reviews we have our positives and negatives and i do have one negative it's a nitpick but we'll get into it a little bit later so starting out with our first positive the cgi and animatronics in this movie are the best I've ever seen in any movie in cinema history, and the cinematography is fucking amazing. Like, these animals feel real. Mm -hmm. Like, when you see the animatronic, like, it looks real as hell. Yeah. And when you think about when this movie was made, it's crazy to see the advances in technology with the CGI. And I will say this my top three most influential movies when it comes to cinema. It goes number three, Jaws, number two, Alien, 1979, and then Jurassic Park. Because of this movie, it laid a foundation of how to mix in CGI with practical effects. And, you know, I've heard stories about people that watched this in the theaters when it first got released. I was born in 97, so I never got the chance to experience that magic, mm -hmm. you know? And, but people said that they were kind of freaked out. They're like, shit, is this real? <laughs> like, I mean, of course, they probably knew it was fake. But just looking at it is amazing. And even the shots in this movie, when Alan and the kids are in the trees watching the Brachiosaurus eat, or when you see the Brachiosaurus for the first time, it's such an awesome shot. And then you see the herd of uh, herbivores in the valley, the T-Rex chasing the gallimimus just everything coming from the raptors and then the t-rex 
uh, Jeep chase scene. Just I can go on and on about the CGI animatronics and cinematography of this movie. Mm -hmm. It's just a scene that will always be imprinted in our brains for sure. And even, like I said, if you're not a big fan of this franchise, you cannot doubt that because of this movie, a lot of movies are how they are today. Like, hell, even a lot of horror movies that, have a, that are a creature feature do take a lot of inspiration from the first Jurassic Park. Yeah. A, a lot of this movie. You cannot deny that. Like, me and Izzy even call out, say, like, yeah, that's our Jurassic Park group <laughs> off. We do. All right. And for number two, our positive the character of Robert Muldoon. Now, I kind of forgot to mention him in the book versus movie ver character version, but I think it's best to have him in here. He's the same character, essentially, Game Warden doesn't trust the Velociraptors or anything like that. He knows that they're smart and that they're going to kill you the minute they get out. But what's crazy is that in the book, I would say he's kind of like a, the main hero. I, Alan Grant is the main character, but Robert Muldoon in the book is the main badass. You know, he's firing at the T-Rex. I think at one point in the book, he even uses a rocket launcher, which is fucking insane. I want to see that. <laughs> if, oh, I wish we could see that in the movie. <laughs> but he lives in the book. But in the movie, he dies when he gets cornered by the Velociraptor because they're strategizing about how they're going to kill Robert Muldoon. And that's amazing. We'll get more into the raptor part. But there were a lot of versions where the character Robert Muldoon lived. but And this is the only screen or script version that we see in the movie to where he dies. Now, rumor has it that he was, di and he was diagnosed with cancer around that time. But rumor has it that that's why they killed him off. Because he would have wanted him to be an important character in this series. But you just never know. Especially with cancer and it sucks. Yeah. It, it's a sad story. But. he He's a badass. Yeah. I like him. <laughs> you know. I, I wish we could have seen what his character would have been like for this series. But you know. I'm glad we, he went out in a funny way with the clever girl part. For sure. <laughs> All right. And so. Our number three positive, the debate of should they or should they not. Ooh. Now, I know that's a little confusing, but hear me out. This is what I. This is one of the few things that the book and movie has in common. They're always challenging the theme, most notably Ian Malcolm, saying, saying that should they do it or should they not? There's a quote said by Ian in the movie. Your scientists were so preoccupied, so preoccupied if they could, they never stopped and think if they should. And what does that mean to you, Izzy? To me, that just means that the scientists need to think about... They're, because they're basically playing the role of God introducing this new species to the world. And it's like, should they do it? Yeah, and even Allie, or, uh, Alan and Ellie... God damn it. Uh, <laughs> Alan and Ellie tell Hammond, they don't know, these animals don't know what century they're in. Yeah. They're alive and they're back. And just like a dog or any animal in general, they will fight back if they feel threatened. Mm -hmm. And you're messing up the the e e uh, ecosystem. E ecosystem in a way. Because there's a reason why we can't coexist with dinosaurs. It would mess everything up. And we wouldn't be at the top of the food chain anymore. And so I like that aspect. Yeah. But when Ian says, are you sure you guys should be playing God? Because, you know, there's a reason why dinosaurs had their shot and they died. Because if dinosaurs were still around to this day, they would be the top species of this planet. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I really liked about this movie is that even though this is a cool dinosaur flick, it also gave you the idea of should you or should you not and think about what we do in this world and how what it impacts. And that's what makes this movie, like, gives it a little bit of that horror vibe is... Yeah, it's scary to think about the dinosaurs eating the people in this movie and in the book, but it kind of reflects reality. I mean, look at it. And right now, scientists are planning to make the first ever woodly mammoth with DNA for, that they found in an embryo and from an elephant. And that's cool. That's not the same as a dinosaur. But who's to say that they won't try to replicate that like in this movie? Yeah. And I'm just going to say this, dude, we've had six movies about why this is a bad idea. Come on. I mean, I get it. Be, would I want to see a dinosaur? Yes. Would I ever go to a real-life Jurassic Park? Hell no. You got me messed up. <laughs> I love 
I love the T-Rex. I love raptors, but no, no. I don't mind seeing pictures. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll stay my happy ass over here uh -huh. to where I won't get killed. All right, and number four, the T-Rex breakout scene. Another scene in this movie that you can make an argument makes this a horror or horror adjacent movie. When the T-Rex, the minute the T-Rex breaks out, the audience is scared as shit. Mm -hmm. And when I've asked people about what it was like watching this movie in theaters, they said it was very loud and scary when the T-Rex was roaring, when the characters were screaming, when the T-Rex breaks into the Jeep and tries to eat the characters of Lex and Tim, and when he eats uh, Donald Gerano in the bathroom, <laughs> when it breaks that little <laughs> funny scene to where he's like trying to hide from it, and when the T-Rex is chasing Ian Malcolm, this T-Rex is scary. Like, it's going to kill you. Its main instinct is to kill you and eat you. Yeah, it it's one of the most, most memorable but horrifying scenes in the entire movie. Yeah, and if you're like, oh, this, this, this is the action-adventure movie. Dude, I want to see you be in that situation. All of us would be fucking scared. Exactly. There, There's no way you wouldn't be scared. Like, if... Even if it was a Brachiosaurus or herbivore, you're still going to get scared. Mm -hmm. That's a big ass creature. <laughs> and another cool scene that we didn't, that we're going to mention right now is when Robert Muldoon and Ellie rescue I uh, Ian from his injuries when they're trying to investigate about where Alan and the kids went. And then Jeff Goldblum hears his boom. And that uh, the footprint of the T-Rex earlier there's water in it, and you see it ripples. Mm -hmm. And we get the coolest action sequence of the T-Rex chasing the Jeep, and it is so... It's terrifying. Like, if that was a ride, a 3D ride, or even just a VR game, that would be cool as hell. I would go on that ride. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, I, I just... I love the T-Rex in this movie. Mm -hmm. It's very, very Jaws-like in a way, where it's not the main antagonist but it is scary when you run into it yeah especially in the sequel lost world for the book and movie oh yeah and now number five another case for jurassic park being a horror movie the kitchen scene my god what can i say about this scene oh this scene with the kids i mean i think in this scene it's probably another one of the intense scenes and the way that they use the pots and pans to distract the raptors. Yep. And the <sighs> raptors in this movie are smart as hell. Yeah, they are. I mean, yeah, there's a scene to where they fall for like a reflection of one of the kids, but dude, these things, they open doors. They learn. And that's the thing that Ian was saying. Life finds a way life evolves. They're going to evolve. They're going to learn the way. And I mean, yeah, like, they're not going to learn how to use a gun or anything like that. But they're going to learn about how to open doors and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, sure enough, they do. And and it that's so scary. And there's even a Jurassic Park fan game to where it you're playing that scene. Probably not as one of the kids, but as a random character. But it's so scary because one mess up and you're going to get killed. And they have to be quiet, and they have to find a way to get around the raptors. But in reality, I think most of us would have died right away. I know I would. <laughs> yeah, there's no way. I just, I would have been petrified. I would not have moved. Mm -hmm. And pray to God, I think just would go in the other room. <laughs> and it's such a good scene, especially when you watch the special features about how they filmed that scene. Mm -hmm. A little bit was claymation, animatronic and the CGI, and they feel like animals. And another thing I want to add about the animatronics is that they legit feel like animals. They And that's where Steven Spielberg was amazing with having paleontologists be consultants on this movie about how these dinosaurs would probably act in real life. Like I said, you can make a debate about it, mm -hmm. but we're not here to do that. <laughs> and so I love the kitchen scene. I love it. Anything else you want to add to it? No, it just it's a great scene. And now for number six. The raptors and the horror atmosphere of this movie. The raptors in this movie, they're just scary. You think the T-Rex is the main antagonist of this movie? But no, it's the raptors. 
the opening scene of this movie it it deals with the death of a worker and they call the main velociraptor the big one mm-hmm. they're smart they str- they strategize when they kill robert muldoon they have one out in the open and robert muldoon thinks oh this is an easy kill but they ambush her from the side mm-hmm. that's scary as hell the fact that they're that smart and they probably were in reality and there's this and another scene in the movie when they go to the computer room to reboot the system and turn the power back on alan looks at the door lock and tries to lock it but he says it can only lock if the power comes back on and the camera looks at the door handle but then the camera pans back up to the door window and you see the raptor smile smiling so menacingly oh. and it's so creepy like <laughs> holy crap and can you imagine the the velociraptors were probably tracking all of them throughout the entire movie yeah they're pack hunters they're smart and and that's what i love and i'm so glad that they were able to they didn't make them stupid like mm-hmm. every animal every dinosaur in this movie was pretty smart yeah and then oh another thing i want to add about a positive you know our actual added to the horror atmosphere the death of Dennis in this movie is disturbing. Mm-hmm. And the Dilophosaurus for the movie death, the Dilophosaurus was playing with Dennis, not in a cute way, but it was kind of sizing up Dennis as to whether he was a danger or not. Because you see his tilt his head, like it's observing Dennis Nedry. Like, can I kill you or do I have to run away? Yeah. And then the minute it knows that Dennis isn't gonna fight back, yeah, this thing goes into kill mode and it eats them inside the jeep and even though you don't see what happens in the jeep the camera pans the outside Mm -hmm. but you see like little shadow silhouettes and his screaming and it's scary as hell it adds that horror atmosphere yeah it was can you just imagine that stuff being sprayed in your face yeah the poison i mean i know in reality the dilophosaurus can never do that that was just the cool little thing that they did because it was mixing with amphibian dna Mm -hmm. oh another thing i want to add about the horror atmosphere for jurassic park so in the book there's a scene to where a mom i I think it takes place in a hospital where a nurse walks into one of the rooms and she and she sees compies eating a newborn baby and it goes into details about how they're eating the baby's face off the eyes are coming out and so be thankful that this movie did not take that scene from the book yeah that would have been disgusting as hell i don't think anybody would watch that yeah i mean like i said you guys gotta listen or read the jurassic park book i highly recommend it all right and number seven the cast is amazing all around and each and every one of them fills their roles perfectly i mean despite a lot of differences between the book and movie versions of a lot of characters I would say they still play them perfectly, and it still ages up well. Yeah, I loved all the actors that they chose for these characters. And like you said, there are differences from the book. But I think there were very well good choices made in the differences. I feel like it made us love the characters more. So. Yeah. Yeah, and then my favorite Jurassic Park character is always going to be Ian Malcolm. And I literally cannot wait to discuss that character <laughs> for the Lost World review. Yeah, it Ian is one of the best. Who would you say is your favorite? Um, out of all of the six movies, um, I would probably have to say probably Doctor Grant. Respectable. I, I mean, and I will say this: I love the character of Alan Grant, but to me, it's just the typical hero like yeah you know by sure like this dude's a paleontologist and knows what the dinosaurs are gonna do i like the t-rex where he says it can't see you if you don't move but for me ian malcolm yeah he's a mathematician and a uh, chaotician but he's just a regular dude in a way he doesn't know anything about dinosaurs i mean maybe the bare minimal facts but he doesn't know their diet, their bone structure, anything. And that's what makes him so cool to me is that he's just this normal dude fighting his way to fighting for a way to survive. Mm -hmm. And that's why 
I like that character a lot. Yeah. He's one of the best. <laughs> yeah, and that's going to do for our positives. Now, I love this movie, but this is just a short nitpick. And Izzy's laughing at it already. <laughs> But the character, a uh, big negative, and it's the only negative, but it's a nitpick, are the characters of Lex and Tim. In the book, they're fine. I don't mind it because in the book, Lex is the younger sibling and Tim is the older sibling. But they reverse it for some reason in this movie. I have no idea why. And they switch their personalities. But in the scene to where they're trying to get the power back on, Alan and Ellie are holding holding the door back so the raptor doesn't come in and brutally murder and eat them all. And the shotgun is a few feet away from them. Lex is on the computer trying to reboot the system. Tim is literally doing nothing in that entire scene. And even as a kid, it bugged the hell out of me. I would yell to the TV, dude, Grab the shotgun. You are literally doing nothing about it. Yeah, he's just being that nosy little sibling watching whatever their older sibling is. And I, I get it. It's a movie. You know, it's a kid. But, like, dude, life or death, dude, even as a kid, I would know just to grab that gun and give it to Alan. <laughs> After that, he, like, even if I was scared shitless, I know to just grab that shotgun and give it to Alan. Yeah, but it didn't go that way. You know, but... <laughs> But, you know, I'm not even going to complain about their performances. That's just a one nitpick because you do pretty good in this movie. You know, and there are people that say, oh, Lex and Tim are annoying in this movie. They're freaking kids. What do you expect kids to be like in this situation? They're not going to be happy. They're going to be scared. Exactly. Just like and just like a freaking adult. We're going to be scared uh, if a T-Rex is coming at us and trying to eat us or a raptor. I heard a raptor's trying to brutally murder us. Yeah, we're going to be scared shitless if we were in that situation. Uh huh. So that's going to be it for our film breakdown and review of the first Jurassic Park. We had a lot of fun making this episode, and I cannot wait to cover The Lost World. And we highly recommend checking out both books because they are amazing in their own unique ways. Even though the movie de- barely borrows elements from the book they're still amazing in their own unique ways yeah they definitely take the time read the book or even just listen to the book that's what i'm going to be doing and it's it's worth it i think it will add so much more to the movie and the reasons why you love it especially if you're a horror fan like us hell yeah and so that's going to be it for this episode we love you all and we appreciate you appreciate you all and we are at 166 subscribers. It's crazy that we were at like 110 last week and we're only growing. And so to my old and new fans, whether you're from uh, the YouTube shorts I post or the TikTok, TikToks I post or the Instagram reels I post from our podcast page, we love you all. Welcome for new fans. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Me and Izzy appreciate every single one of you. Yes. Thank you guys so much. (laughs) All right. And as always, as I like to say, take care of others and take care of yourselves. And we love you all and peace out. See y'all later. Bye, guys.